It all started so well. After arriving at the Santiago Bernabeu for 30 million euros in the summer of 2013, Isco was quickly embraced by Real Madrid fans for his flashes of quality and style of play. Then, age 21, he was the first signing of Carlo Ancelotti's first spell as coach. He was tipped to be next big thing of football, and by all indicators, he had everything required to be just that. But now, 10 years later, our man is without a single club. With his former club Sevilla, literally saying signing him was a mistake. So, what happened? In 2011, Isco represented his country in the Under-20 World Cup held in Colombia, netting one goal in an eventual quarter-final exit, and while Spain largely underperformed, their star was undoubtedly Isco. The boy was very impressive. His dribbling control vision was similar to the legendary Real Madrid player, Zidane. So, after the tournament, our man joined Malaga, which, at the time, was a logical decision. The team was quite impressive. They had the likes of Ruud van Nistelrooy, Santi Cazorla, Monreal, Demichelis, and Caballero. Players who except Van Nistelrooy were well in their prime, and it looked like a playmaker with the skills of Isco, was the final piece in their puzzle. They were right. In just his first season, he would lead them to a spot in Champions League. And the next season would be our man's breakthrough season, scoring 12 goals and 6 assists. And while that might not sound very impressive, Isco was never about just goals. The boy was just exceptional. His ability to create chances were just stunning. But more impressive was his ability to change the course of the game and literally dictate the pace and course of a match. That year, he would be given the Golden Ball Award, beating a certain Courtois to the award. With performances like that, being a Spanish player, only two clubs were the obvious destinations, Real Madrid, or Barcelona. Isco chose Real Madrid, however, from that transfer window, Isco's doom would begin. With Malaga, where Isco had succeeded, he played as either a left-wing forward or an attacking midfielder. Real Madrid, however, played the 4-3-3 formation at the time. There really wasn't any role for an attacking midfielder, and on the left wing, well, let's just say the position was not available. So in order to fit into the squad, our man had to play out of position as a central midfielder. But there arose a small problem. The midfield was stacked. Sorry, that's... That's a big problem. However, initially, things were quite good for Isco. On the 18th of August, 2013, Isco made his official debut for the Merengues recording an assist and scoring the winning goal in a 2-1 home win over Real Betis. But in spite of putting up stunning performances when given the chance and scoring 11 goals, even coming up as a substitute in the 2014 Champions League final and completely changing the game, he just couldn't break into the first team. That summer, during the World Cup, our man was snubbed by the Spanish national because he didn't have enough game time under his belt but people just assumed it was because he was not used to football at the top level, and with time, he would find his place in the team. Isco started the first game of the 2014-15 season against Real Sociedad, and scored the first in a 4-1 win against Almeria on the 12th of December 2014. He was a regular starter in the club's FIFA Club World Cup winning campaign, scoring the last in a 4-0 semi-final routing of Cruz Azul. His performances over the season earned him many plaudits, and soon he was being compared to Zinedine Zidane by the French legend himself. However, that season Real Madrid would go trophyless, so Ancelotti was sacked and in came Rafa Benitez. But while Ancelotti was ready to give our man a chance, Benitez was not so keen. And things only got worse when during a match against Rayo Vallecano, Isco was seen laughing when his team was losing. Isco was also seen mocking Tony Cruz when Tony was substituted off a game, and when Barcelona ran riot against Real Madrid in the Santiago Bernabeu with 4-0 win, Isco needlessly hecked down Neymar and got sent off. Needless to say our man was not having the best of times, but luck was on his side. That year, Zidane was appointed coach of Madrid, and being an outspoken fan of Isco, our man was given enough game time, a return of 10 goals and 8 assists in 30 games followed as once again, Isco started attracting some of the biggest clubs in Europe. But one thing became obvious to everyone. Isco only played when someone in the team was injured or unavailable. 
because in training, Isco just wasn't working hard enough. Sure, he had the skills, but didn't really want to help out the team defensively. And worse of all, Zidane was building a counter-attacking team. And for a player who loves to keep possession of the ball, lacks pace and quick decision-making, it was obvious he didn't belong there. So our man kept on seeing more and more of the bench. And that struggle would go on. And despite Madrid changing different coaches, the one thing they all needed was a hard-working player. In 2022, Isco would leave Madrid for Sevilla. But after just four months, our man was released with the club's sporting director, after saying signing him was a mistake. Thank you for watching and have a great day.